An enormous number of grassroots First Nations people have contacted me by email, by Twitter, and even by Facebook. One of those is the former chief of the El Sapogtog First Nation in New Brunswick. Her name is Susan levy Peters. She joins me now by telephone. Hey, welcome to the, chief, uh, to the show. Uh, I appreciate you being here, former chief. Thank you very much, Ezra. Now, tell me a little bit about your experiences as a chief of the largest First Nation in New Brunswick trying to wrestle down the financial matters. Give me, give me, you, we talked about, about this on the phone. What's it like trying to run a fiscally responsible uh, Indian band? It, it's very difficult because there's a lot of challenges you face. First of all, as a chief, you have no power or authorities, whether you have a minority government, majority government, especially when you have a minority government, because the majority government um, can overrule the budget and whatnot. So, and then at the end of it, once the budget is completed, everything's all completed, it has to be submitted to uh, Indian Affairs, where they have to approve the budget before, it even, we, before any funding is even released. So give me an example of a case where you tried to go one way, but uh, your attempts to rein things in got overruled or overwhelmed. Can you, can you give me a specific example of, of one time where you tried to make things work, but, but you were undone? Yes, uh, I was trying to, uh, our, our social program here, our welfare program, uh, the, the rates are over 20 years old. So I was trying to bring them up to par uh, to today to meet the inflation rate. And I was denied all the way up to Indian Affairs. Like they told me I have to follow the budget and whatnot. It did not matter to them that the children were going without. Now, so, so go that, that's a case of, uh, of uh, trying to get money to actual kids on the reserve. Tell me about the Indian industry, the lawyers, the consultants, uh, people billing a hundred grand for things. Is, was that a problem for you at the Elsa Pogtog First Nation? Uh, did that take a, a lot of money away from the real stuff like health and education? Oh, for sure. Just the coal management is, itself, like, uh, because um, the Department of Indian Affairs believes we don't know how to manage our money, so they put coal management, they impose it on us, and then they forced us to pay $400,000. I had to pay a big accounting firm $400,000 a year to make sure that we followed the budget, make sure everything was done, and still my band was going in a deficit. That I did not appreciate and I did not like, and that was my biggest argument with uh, Indian Affairs, because here I am telling them, it's wrong, and they're telling me, no, we have to do it that way, and still the band was going in a deficit, and my people were still going without. Well, now, what, what was the size of your budget? Uh, how, how much money did the Elsa Talk First Nation spend in a given year? I would say, including everything, I would say be, between, well, the Indian Affairs funding was approximately about $20 million, with a population of about uh, three. 3,000 people, and then we had about another maybe 10 to 15 million of our, um, like, fisheries, health, uh, the other programs that are federally funded, but not through INAC. Now, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Now, it, I, I know exactly how much the prime minister makes. I know exactly how much the mayor makes, but it's not public knowledge how much chiefs and band counselors make. Can I ask you what you earned as the chief for the El Sapogtog First Nation? Oh, for sure. The first six months I was in, in, as chief, I was on welfare. Um, the Indian Affairs refused to pay me for anything. So that was a little bit tough because when I had meetings in Ottawa, I would have to use my welfare check to buy my ticket to go there, and then when I come back, I would get reimbursed for my travel. So that was a little bit tough. But after six months of um, them putting me through that, finally they decided, okay, we want to put you on salary. So I think I was earning about fifty, fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Fair enough. Listen, I, I've enjoyed talking to you and meeting you on the on the phone today. I look forward to talking to you in the future because you're someone who's lived it from the inside. Uh, I, I think you have a lot of personal experiences that can leaven my my political experiences. But you've also had more frustrations, too. I hope we can stay in touch over the course of the weeks and months ahead. I hope so, too, Ezra, because I think uh, both sides of the story have to be heard because we need to resolve it. We don't need to continue to be having all these protests and everything going on when the solution is so simple. We stay just in need touch. To work. Thank you, Susan.